Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I am Richard. I'm Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Sarah at SV Quick on the Make Code Forum. That's not the right order, is it? Uh, depends how you're ordering it, but probably not okay. if you're going. Uh, yeah, it depends. I think by first or if last you're doing name. alphabetical, then Sarah would go first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. This is this is all just silliness because today we have a very special uh, uh, stream, which is we are announcing the winners of our female game changers jam. Yay! Okay, so the theme of this game jam was um, making games about women who have impacted your life. Um, and when we were judging the games, we kind of you know we had a number of criteria that we went over. You know, like one of them is just kind of like quality of game, like the complexity of games, and also the adherence to themes. So we really wanted to, you know, showcase games that were like really talking about women being empowered and, you know, very explicitly. Um, so we are going to be playing through 10 games today. We have um, a number of honorable mentions, and then we have our uh, third, second, and first place winners. And as always, everyone who gets mentioned today, you will get a badge on the forum. So if you don't already have it, you can get the Game Jam honoree if you're an honorable mention. And then um, if you are in first, second, or third place, you can get a Game Jam winner badge, which is cool. The exclusive. I don't have that badge. Thomas, do you have that badge? Nope, I don't have that badge. Yeah. Sarah, you must have that badge. No. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah, it's just, it's really exclusive. I wish I had one. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, all right. Well, with that, um, also Joey's going to be joining us. He is, uh, his getting his lunch and apparently is delayed, but he'll be here. Um, all right. So, um, let's go ahead and, uh, jump in with our first game. So this is going to be our first honorable mention. And it is Sarah. You, you got to make the actual sound. I I think it's more funny if I just like do drum roll motions while. <laughs> it There's is no sound. I don't know. <laughs> Infiltration by Mint Phoenix. Oh my gosh, I'm more used to seeing Kiwi Phoenix, but um, yes, uh, Infiltration by Mint Phoenix, and um. The reason we like this game is because of this little opening opening spiel. So I'm, I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and read it. Um, theoretically, if the apocalypse broke out and mega corporations hid away in aircrafts and your family agrees to infiltrate one, who would scavenge for food and risk being caught while the others hid in the cargo bay? Wait for food to be dropped off on a different level, because I know it would be my mother and she wouldn't be voted on to do so. She would volunteer. Infiltration. Yeah. So this is basically a game that is fanfic about this person's mom, which is a pretty good concept, I think, for a game. Also, Lucas, thank you for dropping the links in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and deputize you. That's that's your job for this stream. So thank you for that. Um, okay. So this is a nice little um Metroidvania style roguelike, uh, not roguelike, but uh <laughs> platformer. Um, where you jump with A, there's a bunch of different enemy types, um, and you can press B to launch. Also, note this uh, amazing little recharging, reloading animation every time you fire, uh, which is very nice. Um, and there's all sorts of different enemy types of varying difficulty um, that you can be. And I actually don't know if I've been to the if I've gotten to the end of this game yet. Um, there is, I believe, multiple levels. Yeah, so you got the Metroid style drawer doors you can drop down through, um, which is pretty cool. Oh my god. Ah, oh, gosh. Yeah, okay. The reason I have not made it to the end is because of how difficult it is. It there is are so many enemies who will who will just destroy you. Um, but we'll give it one more shot. All right. All right. Oh my gosh, Marty. Dying. There's so many projectiles that are firing at any given point in time. Whoa, okay. Who are you? Are you cool or? No, not cool. Not cool. 
Ooh. Clearly, they're working for the mega corporations. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, okay, that looks good. Nice. Whoa, now I can fire Ooh. these things. I didn't even know that mechanic existed in here. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever made it this far, to be honest. Hi, Joey, how's your lunch? Joey, you're muted. They uh, ordered takeout. They remade it four times, like on the counter in front of me before it touched me, right? Like they kept on saying, why is there a chicken sandwich in here? And like, I, I was in there like, I didn't order a chicken sandwich this time. And then they put it back and then they came out like, why is there a bucket of chicken? And they're like, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to this one. I just got some <laughs> little like little nuggets cause they were half off. I don't know. Well, everyone has been dying to know. So okay. that's great to hear. Okay, yeah. well, anyway, thank you so much, Mint Phoenix. Infiltration, everybody check it out. Um, next up, we have another game. And to talk about this one, we have Thomas. Yay. Yeah, this one is, uh, I think it's just called Megan Rapinoe. And I'm sorry, I don't actually know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. So. Um, uh, I like this one because, first off, I learned about a real person that I had not heard of before, who's actually pretty cool. Um, she's like a soccer. soccer Olympian person uh, with cool hair. And it's just it's a fun mechanic, you know, changing your hair. I like the score multiplier. I thought it worked very smoothly. And um, it was kind of a nice way of rewarding good behavior without being too punishing <laughs> when you mess up. And yeah, of course, we get our nice little fun facts. And the hair change animation is cool. Yep. yep. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, maybe turn the volume down a little bit. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. Nope, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. OK, well, anyway, um, let's talk briefly about the mechanics of this game. So you have, um, if, if you know about Megan Rapinoe, you know that she has very brightly colored hair. And um, you can press the uh, B button to change your hair color, so from blue to pink. Um, and uh, depending on what color you are, you can uh, get a multiplier for destroying enemies. So if I'm pink and I destroy pink enemies, my multiplier down here at the bottom will go up. And if I'm blue and I destroy blue enemies, then my multiplier will also go up, but it, it gets reset if I'm pink and destroy a blue enemy or blue and destroy a pink enemy. And um, you can also pick up these things um, as you go through, and they give you um, different uh, facts about Megan Rapinoe, which is very cool. And um, I, one thing that I just really like about this game is that it's basically Ikaruga, which is a game I like a lot, um, which is a Japanese uh, shmup by Treasure. Um, that's uh, super cool. So anyway, thank you so much. Go Mustangs. Go Mustangs, by the way, is typically um, is a is a class, I believe, um, and so this is a from somebody in that class, I assume. Um, so check that out. All right, next up we have a game from Stream Regular, Lucas, which is Blast and Slash. All right, if you have, we've played this game on stream before. But you seriously need to play it if you haven't played it. It's super fun. Um, so this is a, um, a roguelike game. Um, it's a platformer. Um, and uh, it's got just a really cool aesthetic, as Lucas games often do. And just a whole bunch of different things you can do. So um, you can uh, use um, B to do this slash attack. You can use A to fire your blaster and you can slide, and you can also jump and dash to go far. You also hurt things while you're jumping and dash. Um, and uh, the really fun thing about this game, like it's already pretty cool, but the thing that makes this game super cool is that when you're doing a run, oh, Cactus King, hate this crew. Oh my gosh, no way, I'm gonna die. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was fast, All right, let's try again. Oh boy. Um, 
Yeah, but the, the really cool thing about this game is that as you're doing runs, um, when you defeat enemies, you get money, and then you can use that money to um, uh, unlock more things to enhance your abilities as you go. Um, so you can see that Cactus just dropped some money, which I'm going to grab. So I'm going to try and kill this ghost guy before he kills me. No! Go away! No, no, no! No, 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 no! Forget about your slash. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, slash this guy. There we go. Take his money. By the way, Invalid Project on the forum did the music for this game, which is great, as Invalid Project's music always is. Oh. Uh... What's up? Oh, I'm saying the game was just to talk about a second. I just thought it was <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. just giving us... Um, a uh, future. There's something that Joey will have a revelation about in a future game that we're uh, going to be reviewing. Okay, so um, you have money. You see, I have 16 money up here, um, and uh, when I interact with the shop, I can now buy one of these upgrades if I have enough money. So I have enemies drop more HP, so that's what I can afford. Homing blasts, which I want way more than enemies can drop more HP, but that's 20. Um, and multi shot, which is 18. So I'm just going to save my money. Um, so we'll go to the next um, upgrade so I can, oh, I do want to show off one of the upgrades, so try to get more money this time. It's a good idea to fight as many enemies as you can just to get more money. Um, and there's an awesome boss battle at the end of this, so definitely stick through. I believe that in the bottom left is indicating what level you're on and how many levels there are. Um, and you want to have a lot of power-ups so that you can uh, beat that boss, because the boss is tough. 30 should definitely give me something, right? By the way, I think my favorite upgrade I've gotten is the one that just makes them drop more gold. Then you get so much gold. But you can buy so many upgrades, which is That's how I like nice. to. Yeah. Best upgrade most... generally in the game. Yeah. All right, all right, let's get something now. Okay, we have more gold drops. Yeah, I want that. And then we have multi-shot. So, oh, I can only buy one. Dang it. All right, well, I chose multi-shot, which is the right choice. So you can see now I fire a bunch of stuff, which is awesome, because I can just rain death upon my enemies. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, okay, so um, I've got a lot of games to go through, so I'm going to kind of close it here on this one, but I seriously recommend playing through it. Um, and I think there are maybe some more updated versions on the forum than there are on the Game Jam page. So you might want to check that out. I'm sure Lucas has the most up-to-date link um, uh, in the chat. Okay. Next up, we have another game, and uh, Sarah is going to talk about this one. Yes, I am. As song was really, really well done, uh, like really kind of encapsulates the theme really well so if anyone didn't watch like biden's inauguration uh this poet amanda gorman spoke at it and i think the the basically in this game you kind of go through and collect it collect that poem and you get like bits of it as you're going through um and it's just it's it's really really clever and i don't know i just thought it was really like wholesome nice thing to play <laughs> yeah I like the art a lot, too. Um, but let, let's watch that intro animation again, because it's quite great. Oh, wait, I have to... We did the thing where the simulator sound gets messed up. Okay, here we go. The hill we climb. Beautiful. All right. Um, so, by the way, this is by... Um, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce this person's name. Seg Cheggy Bear? C Eggy Bear? Seggy Bear? Um... C-E-G-G-I-E -G -G -E bear. Yeah, I have no idea how to pronounce it either. <laughs> but, so as you go, you collect these uh, quills, I believe they are, um, which uh, will give you thoughts of Amanda Gorman, and then you can collect the parts of the poem, which is here, which actually gives you the actual poem that was It's a very good poem, so I, I recommend reading through all of it. Um, and, uh, yeah. Great, great entry. Um, had a lot of fun playing it. And also, I did not watch Biden's 
inauguration. So it was uh, nice to read this poem, which I had not seen before. Um, all right, cool. Next up, we have a game that I believe, Sarah, you're going to talk about this one too, right? Or was it Thomas? Yeah, I can I can talk about this one too. Um, this one was super cool. Uh, it's kind of it, definitely a little bit different of a mechanic than I was expecting for any of the games on the game jam. But basically, the premise is like your Catherine Johnson working at the, the, the NASA, whatever you want to call it, and you're trying to land something. I don't remember. You can read it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and basically, you kind of have to calibrate your the thing that you're trying to land. And uh, it's fun, but I don't think any of us successfully got anything to land. All of us just crashed. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend giving it a try. If anyone has landed, let us know what's what's the, the, the secret, because <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna. Well, yeah. Sarah, you're gonna eat those words because I'm gonna land perfectly first try here. Um, oh, that's okay. What's gonna happen okay. Unless so you have to solve a math problem first. Don't forget. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is, you know. Right. Yeah. And of course, you get to learn about Catherine Johnson, which is cool. sorry. I I like skipped over that. Part. Right. And you're not <laughs> actually playing as Catherine Johnson. You're playing as um, Engineer Selena or Captain something, uh, Captain Cora, I think. Um, Everything except the Delta V. Can you figure it out? With what you have? I can try. Data stream. One, three, divided by one half. One third divided by one half. Oh my gosh. 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 It's two thirds. It's two thirds. Which is not one of these options. Not any of those. I never got that math problem before. I've got a lot of the 42 one. Oh, yeah, it is two thirds. Jeez, I haven't done fraction division in forever. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to do this one more time. Um, yeah, I don't think I got that tricky of a math problem. Yeah. <laughs> tricky, as I, I say, as an engineer. <laughs> let's let's just move past that. <laughs> I, I think maybe they meant like one divided by three divided by one divided by two. Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, and we were just imposing the order of operations onto that <laughs> formula. It was, it was like space differently, though, right? Like there's this extra space around the center, right? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, there was, I thought. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the way you do fraction division, if you don't know, is uh, if you divide a fraction by another fraction, the other one gets flipped and then multiplied. The way to yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, Magic. Okay. <laughs> By the way, this game says press menu to skip the text, which does not work. So we are going to read all of this text again. This is going to be the only the only other try we're going to do. So <laughs> all the while, the timer is just ticking down above you. Yeah. For your I'm life rude. problem. I, I... <laughs> it is a fun, you know, once you get to the landing mechanics and you're like trying to figure out how to land, you go through all these different stages. So okay. a lot of thoughts put into it. X divided by six equals seven. That's 42. 42. Congratulations, Engineer Selena. Now you must land your rocket. Your rocket has four stages. Hit A to jettison each stage. The last stage is a parachute. You have to be traveling at less than 120 to deploy the chute. Use up, down to control the throttle. You have to be traveling below 20 to land. Do not hit the rocks. Good luck. All right, you've got this. All right, so I'm going to jettison. There you go. Uh, um, All right, good. Okay. Oh, oh, now you're going no, up. You're going up. Bad. So oh, I'm going up. Yeah, you've got positive velocity, vertical velocity. Okay, now you're going too fast. Okay, down. Down, down. Okay, I, yeah, I see it now. I see, I, I get it now. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Come on, try to bounce it off a little bit. All right, I'm out of fuel. So oh, I guess oh I'm no! Just oh. Jettison. <laughs> I don't know. I we'll think just we're switch too to the parachute. the parachute. Not sure how to get there. Oh dear. <laughs> I think you have to be going. Ooh. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Richard, uh, I'm sorry to say, but you didn't land it perfectly first try. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, we, we just have different definitions of perfectly. Oh, my gosh. Alex has, <laughs> in the chat has helpfully pointed out that I am so dead. Um, okay. 
Um, next up, we have um, our last honorable mention, which is going to be, um, I don't think anyone was assigned to talk about this one, so I'll talk about it. Amelia Earhart, Aviator Extraordinaire. Thomas, did you win it? I can, but. Go for it. Not too. Yeah, this is a cool one. You go through a bunch of different flights that I assume Amelia Earhart actually did. I didn't, didn't actually uh, check that, but. Um, I could probably yeah, recognize just... them because I did. As for the game jam, I made a little demo GIF that had all of Amelia Earhart's flights in it, and I did learn all of them through the process. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, so you you kind of like pick flights and you go, uh, you know, it's one of those games where you're going horizontally and you're trying to avoid, I guess, headwinds um, and uh, get to the, the landing point before you run out of fuel. Um, yeah. So this one, it looked really nice and it had all those different flights which were kind of cool and then you sort of unlock more of the sort of navigation ones as you go um so that's fine and it has an endless mode which is also nice you just kind of pick up the magic flying fuel canisters as you do yeah i think that's and how as, modern as work people have pointed out in the chat it's a really good looking game like everything even they even customize the menu and everything which is awesome so um, we're going to do Harbor Grace, Newfoundland to Londonderry, uh, Northern Ireland. Loading. Harbor Grace. Anything is actually happening during that loading screen, or if it's just for show. Yeah, I, I think most of them, when, when I see them in form games, are just for show. But um, I would like to look it up. Okay, so span A. I like to imagine that it's not loading the game. It's loading the plane. Mm. Mm, yeah. All right, I guess we're going up. Yeah. Okay, got plenty of fuel. Look how look how nice this game looks. It's just like such an awesome little sprite they've done here, and the the clouds also look very nice. Mm -hmm. um, if you scroll and, down, if you go down, oh, well, oh, I've fog. flown into dense <laughs> fog. Is it perhaps a good idea for me to climb to get out of the dense fog? That's a good question. I think I just I mean, endured the dense me. fog when I was playing it, but no, yeah, I'm I at the too. I'm at the top, so I guess I'll just fly through it. The fog effect is cool, though. I wonder I wonder how they did it. Hmm. I have to look it up later. All right, my fuel is going down. I, I have a feeling cloud fog does not consume more fuel. But, oh my God, there's the ocean. Okay, <laughs> yep, there's stay away from that. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to fly a plane. I'll be the first to admit it. But I know a few things, which is ocean bad. Um, unless crashing, then ocean better than okay. land. Yeah, better than land. Um, mm -hmm. but, okay, you are landing. Press A to deploy landing gear. Nice. A successful landing. Congratulations. Nice. All right. So, um, yeah, you can go through a bunch of different flights, and they have the endless mode. Um, and uh, once again, this one is by Blobby on the forum. OK, next up, we are going to now be getting into our top three. and. In an unprecedented, except it has happened before, turn of events, we have a tie for third place. And uh, for the first game that we're going to be going through, Joey is going to talk about it. Joey. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was informed about this after I ate lunch on. Uh, I looked at it real quick. So it's oh, loading that real cool. Yes. So it's uh, Grace Hopper's uh, Hopmatic. So Grace Hopper, I, it's going to say it on the screen, uh, invented some of the first computers, uh, first linkers, all that sort of stuff. Very oh, cool person. And right here, we're doing a binary encoding. So it'll show you a letter on the screen, and it has the like key on the left. And you press left to do a zero and right to do a one. Um, so there's a secret in here that I'm not aware of. It sounded like somebody was. I think Tom, so Richard said, like, ah, Joey's going to think this is really cool or something like that. And I do think it's really cool, but 
I'm not aware of any secrets. I think we oh, just not have any secrets. Oh, okay. Just thought maybe. But it, it, it did make me go, oh, because I, the the lighting is so cool right here when you submit them. Uh, and I mean, it's just a fun idea in general. I was thinking that I was spelling out something, but then I was like, I don't think that there's that many words that have X, Z, F in a row. I'm not sure I remember that word. <laughs> Um, yeah. So if you're not following along, you can see that there is a one of the rows is highlighted in green, and that's the number I'm currently trying to do. And so I press left and right to encode these things. Um, to yeah. this is basically what's happening to your computer. It's just computers are a lot faster typing than us. That's true. But there is a tiny keyboard with a big left key and a right key. Yeah. And every time your compiler is writing down something into machine code, it is indeed. Um, yeah, it's actually a little mouse that does it, and then he looks at the camera and says, "It's living." Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. That's actually the ASCII table. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, it kind of makes sense to just do the ASCII table rather than making its own unique encoding. That would probably be more work when it's you know you just kind of increment it. Yeah, I didn't bother to check, but I assumed it was. So I'm glad that you have confirmed. Glad to confirm. Um, yeah. Uh, and if you want to turn them all lowercase, if I recall correctly, it's just you flip that one to a zero at the very beginning of each one, this, or the second. Is that really how that oh, really? works? I thought they were. I thought it was all lowercase and then all uppercase right next to each other. So you just like offset it by thirty-two or whatever. There, there's a bit flip to to get no, it. So I think it's that one. No, there's some. Uh, there is some stuff in between them though, Thomas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, anyway. so yeah. Um. Next up, we have. Um, our other third place contender, and Thomas is going to talk about this one. Yes, I am. This is The Adventures of Francis Perkins by Rohan, who I think I saw in the chat. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, Congratulations, Rohan, for taking third place in this game jam. Yes. Um, looks amazing. Uh, and is it's just a really cool platform. I really like the camera, the way the camera operates. It's kind of delayed and followed you around. Um, I mean, who doesn't love saving children from manual labor? Um, it's great. And again, it was another person I didn't, I hadn't really heard much about, so I was happy to learn about someone new. Uh, and then, yeah, get a little bit of cool history while saving children and enjoying a game that looks very good and plays very smoothly. So nice yeah, job. Yeah, the color palette shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's yeah. such a good looking game, and also I like that it uses my fancy text extension. Um, just fancy. And did not did not factor into the judging process, but it did make me happy. <laughs> um, and uh, I I want to get to the mine car levels because those are cool. Those are cool. I I really struggled with some of them, but they're really cool. Oh yeah, no for sure. Um, sounds are good. Can we talk about? I was, I was just gonna say that, like the sounds, like the sound effects, the music in the background, the way that you get the transitions too, it's just, it's mm -hmm. so good. But yeah, I had also never heard of Francis Perkins, so I was glad to learn something. The Mines. All right, now this one has a mechanic where there are these ropes you can climb up by pressing up. And notice also how the background changes when you go underground, which is fun. Yeah. Um, so let's go find those find those kids and stop them from mining things. Yeah, no mining stuff for you. Oh no, uh -oh, I left behind. <gasps> Francis Perkins does not abandon children. There we go. I did I've never heard that that effect before. It's so <laughs> ominous. <laughs> yeah. Alright, next is the minecart level, I believe. Yeah. So if you've ever played minecart levels in Donkey Kong Country or you know other games. Kind of know what to expect here. So you got a minecart that you can jump on the rails, which is really cool. 
The wheel spinning animation was cleverly done. Tricky yeah. when you've got basically square wheels. But it's nice. I'm always a fan of platformers that, you know, switch up mechanics. And now I was not able to beat this one, but we're going to give it a shot real quick. I wasn't either. Ah. Nope. Oh. Beep. That's what happens. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to, like, basically slow down to a stop, I think, at that section. Yep. Anyway, thank you so much, Rohan. Um, really great game. Make sure you check it out. Um, next up, we have our second place game. And this one, Sarah is going to talk about yeah so congratulations oh goodness this person's name verisutha um they submitted a game called lady lovelace's time machine and it is just a really really fun game to play really cool kind of theme around it where you're a time traveler they tried to go to the future but they ended up going to the past and they meet all these like amazing women in basic i think all of them are in science um you start off by getting introduced by Aunt Tata Lovelace, and then you have these four other quadrants that you need to go around to and meet people. Oh god, there's Katherine Johnson, there's Grace Hopper, Marie Curie, and I always forget Mary, Mary Shelley. Shelley. Thank you, Thank you, Mary Shelley. Yeah. Um, and they each have different tasks that you need to complete in order to fix your time machine and go home. Um, and so it's just like, it really captures kind of the the theme of the game jam really nicely and you have some really fun games to play too. I never got to finish I never beat Grace Hoppers. Um, I, I Grace finished. Hoppers then. It's great. Oh, Grace Hoppers, you can, this one's easy, you can cheese this one by just spamming space and the arrow keys. But, um, that makes sense. Yeah, I was yeah. like trying to like only stay in one direction. I think I'm also really bad at like mapping two controls at once. But... Uh, yeah, you gotta squash the bugs. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, all the games in this one were fun. Um, and then the ending is also really, like, sweet. Um, and uh, at the end, you you know, you, you get little tidbits of information about each uh, character that you talk to, and at the end there is a little quiz, so, you know, you gotta pay attention. Make sure that you learn what you're supposed to from each of these people. Um, Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a really well done game. As these nice yeah. mini games. There, there are a lot of mini games, so we're not going to play all the way to the end. Uh, but definitely play it out, and it's got a really cute ending cutscene too. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, the art is really good. I think. Also, yeah, the, the art is just great in this game. If you saw Grace Hopper's portrait, um, all of the all of the uh, people have uh, uh, similar things, which is really cool. I think nice. the other one that had the the game that has the best art is the um, upper right corner um, yeah. mini game it has nice art. All right. Okay. Well, next up, um, we are going to do the winner of this game jam in first place. We have a game which is simply called Marie Curie by Peppercorn Studio. Yay! Peppercorn Studios presents a super radish production. Love that. Marie Curie, press A to start. Um, all right, so um, this game, um, you play as Marie Curie in uh, your 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 little lab here, and um, you uh, have all of these uh, different chemicals you can mix. And the idea is you're trying to discover new elements. So when I press uh, B, I go into like selecting mode and I can go ahead and select one of these um, chemicals and then take it over to the speaker over here and uh, mix it in. So mix that guy in there. There we go. We're just gonna mix a bunch of stuff till something happens. I was playing this for a while and I did get one that was all rainbow. So I'm hoping that happens again. Rainbows are very pretty one. What? That's so cool. I didn't get that far. Okay, I'm out of stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna go and uh, you can go into menu and you can order more supplies. And then when you do that, you can come out here outside and there's your delivery. So pick 
that up. And now all of the supplies have been refreshed. So. I'd put this one in there. This one. Seems pretty Come stuck on. on that green. Yeah, it seems, it does seem stuck on the green, though. Maybe you maybe submit that as an element. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Never mind. Okay, turn to black. Any different color of black. Okay. Alright, well, let's try submitting this one. So if you press menu, um, you can go ahead and um, apply for a new element. That is a new element! What will you name it after? You now we get to name our elements. Um, I'm gonna call it. Plutonium. Nice. Now, um, because I discovered a new element, that means I got a Nobel Prize. And the Nobel Prize goes to... Marie Curie! Yay! Um, very Whoa, good. now you have $150! <laughs> there you go. Think of all the supplies you can order now. says that this music is actually from one of their games. It is very okay. good music. Like, oh, that's good. Um, all right. Well, very cool. So thank you, Peppercorn Studios, for um, submitting uh, to this game jam and just making this really delightful game. I love all the different things that you go between, like all the little scenes you get. Um, and the mixing chemicals with the big, you know, like explosions and stuff is just a lot of fun. So thank you. And also... Uh, good job, Cutie Phoenix, who I think gets a, a partial credit for doing doing the music. Um, also, I was wondering if this was based off of the Cutie Phoenix game, because it does have that selecting mechanic that was in their game jam submission from a while ago. Um, anyway, thanks, everybody. Um, so that take, that is it for our um, game jam thing. Just as a summary, um, in the top three spots, we have Hopomatic by RYMC88. The Adventures of Francis Perkins by Bohan, uh, Lady Lovelace's Time Machine by Verisutha, and Marie Curie by Peppercorn Studios. All right. And, whoa, there we go. And with that, um, we are going to be, uh, we have about 20 minutes left in our stream. And um, because we have time left over, there is a new game that got posted to the forum, which I promised I would play on stream. So we are going to be playing um, the Make Code Forums A Coder King Mystery by Chimro de Pro, which is the sequel to their Make Code Forums game. Now, has anyone played this yet? I have not. Nope. No, okay. Good, because apparently there is a this is a this is a mystery game, and there is going to be a uh, a you know mystery that needs to be solved. Uh, they also mentioned that we should be taking notes as we play this game. So um, I'm going to rely on you guys to do that as I play the game. If there's anything that seems like, you know, jumps out to you, you know, maybe make note of it, and then we can kind of use it to solve the mystery later. They just, like, make an escape room? Like, what is this? I'm very excited. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, let's go. The Make Code Forums, A Coder King Mystery by Jim Verdeco. Okay. All right. So um, this is based off of their other um, uh, forum game, which if you've ever played before, has a really awesome little interface you can do. So here we have Coder King 3 Legends. Let's go ahead and open that up. Coder King 3. The results should be out. Who do you think will win? Hmm, I think Luke will win. Really? I'm guessing Invalid Project. Who's in the chat, I think. I think the winner is Stop! Huh? It's a disaster. My, my. 
Okay, Taser, spit it out. My account has been hacked. Oh my God. Oh my, that's terrible. My Google, Microsoft, and MakeCode accounts. Whoever it was clearly looking for something. Coder King is over. That sounds awful. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. What is it? Escama, did you hack into my account? What? No, guys, it's actually not me. Uh, okay. Guys, it's not me. Stop. Oh, folks, let's not point fingers. Yay. Besides, we don't have any proof that it's one of us. Hmm. Fine, I guess. Actually, I do. Whoa, it's MakeCode. MakeCode always scares me. Why? Ah! I typed it out loud. It's like, hmm. I can see when accounts are hacked, but not who hacked them. To hack your MakeCode account, the hacker had to be on the forum. And I have everyone who was online last night. The exact time of the hack was 11.23 PM. So here are the suspects. Sarge, Invalid Project, Abstract Designer, Scamma, Pixadoodle, uh, Danger Noodle, Richard, and Glistrap. Scamma is on the list. I rest my case. <laughs> hey, I'm on the list, smiley face. I will make another topic for you to state your alibis. One last thing. Chimbro to Pro, Lucasim, and Blobby. You will be my assistant detectives, so I want you to come too. Huh? Oh, sweet. Hmm. Wait, seriously? Oh, cool. Happy coding, everyone. Oh, man, I hope I did it. <laughs> All right. Announcement. Hacking interrogation. Boy. Welcome to the interrogation topic. We should do this quickly, so we'll start with Sarge. Hello? Oh, nice topic. Thank you. I'm just going to ask about what you were doing last night. Oh, uh, okay. Odd question. Last night from 8 p.m., I was knee-deep in Deliver Mania bugs. I had a deadline for an update looming. At 8.30, I talked with Danger Noodle in the chatting area. Lastly, at around 9.40 p.m., I talked with Glitchtrap. He was in such a rush, so we only talked for five minutes. After that, I coded a bit more and went off to bed at 10 p.m. Sarah, are you writing all this down? Hmm, okay, that's everything. <laughs> oh, crap, yeah. I forgot I was supposed to be picking up. <laughs> I see. Who do you think did it? Who did it? No, I have absolutely no idea. I don't want to accuse anyone. Okay, thank you, Sarge. Bye. All right, Thomas, you're on the hook for notes for this next one. Oh, boy. Bounds. Yes, sir. -y. This is cool, LOL. Everything he said seems plausible. Interesting. He mentioned glitch chat being in a rush. Next person, invalid project. Hello? Oh, hi. Sorry you pinged me. Yes, that's how this topic works. We need to ask questions. What were you doing yesterday night? OK, you know it's that scam, though, right? They currently have no evidence against him yet. Fine. So last night, I was collaborating with Abstract Designer on Roller. He had asked me to make some music with an offering, of course. Time? Around 7 p.m. Pixel Doodle and I talked about Pixel Smash, too. That happened at 8, then I went straight to bed. All right, and you think that Emma is guilty? Obviously. I think it's a scammer. Literally think he nearly hacked a Microsoft organization. <laughs> Thanks for the recap. Um, <laughs> thank you, Invalid Project. You can go. Wow, he really thinks it's Scamma. I don't blame him. I heard they made a story of what happened. In the Make Code Forums topic? Oh, that, yeah. It's like famous. Pretty mad game, not going to lie. Timber Pro made that game. Well, anyway, in <laughs> Invalid Project, I uh, was freaked out. I think this just wants to be on guard if it happens again. Ah, uh, It's true. He was quite traumatized by it all. OK, next is Abstract Designer. Sarah, are you ready for this one? Hello. Let's do this quick. What were you doing last night? 
ah, okay, Invalid Project and I were working on Roller. I came on at around uh, 6.45 p.m. for it. After that, I had a talk with Scam at 8. It was about some extension that was driving him mad. I sent him to Boosted Games. After that, I got bored and read a book. Came back to the forum at 9.45 p.m. I talked with uh, Richard in the chatting area for 30-ish uh, minutes. Then I logged out for the day. Wow, this is turning into a timeline. Who do you think is the culprit? I think it's Pixel Doodle. Apparently, his alibi is crazy short. Other than that, either Scamma or Richard. Dun, dun, dun. What? Yes, listen, how could it possibly? Just give me a sec. That's insane. Okay, folks, let him speak. What did you That's... do, Richard? I, yeah, it's just, I couldn't help myself, I guess. I know Richard is an admin. <laughs> but Glitch Chat told me he was up all night for some reason. Fun fact, I would not need to hack anybody because I can literally just control anyone's account. Hmm, I understand. You can go. Thanks. I can't believe he accused Richard. I know. It is pretty strange. Glitch Trap was the one who told him. Can't be easy to make someone believe that. Yeah. All right, who's next? I'm next. <laughs> oh, yes, next. All right, listen up. <laughs> I know you people think it's me. But you're completely wrong. Scamma, we understand that I'm not done. At six, I was debugging one of my extensions. I talked to Abstract Designer for a few minutes about it. He recommended I go to Boosted Games. At 15 past 10, I talked to Boosted Games. He said I should go to Richard. I talked to him at, in the chatting area at 10.30. Talked to him for about five minutes. Then I shut myself down. Shut yourself down? Silence! My personal suggestion, ask Abstract Designer. He had asked me how I hacked into the forum a few days ago. Not that I think it's him. I don't accuse without evidence. Okay, thank you. I'm not done. I'm telling you right now, it's not me. I hate this so much. Being accused without evidence. I th thought you said people were friendly. <laughs> I thought you said these people were friendly. They are. They're just scared for Taser. Just blinking at each other. Bye, I guess. A standoff. <laughs> wow, he's really creepy. Yeah, um, he scared me a lot. It was way less scary in the game. My computer nearly exploded. Let's move on. It's Boosted Games next. Hi, what is this? We're interrogating people for who hacked Taser. Cool. W wait. You think I did it? No, we're just asking what you were doing last night. At the time, the hacking happened. Ah, okay. Uh, so, uh, last night, I was working on a new game concept. I didn't even realize Taser's account had been hacked. That is, until I saw his post this morning. Oh yeah, I talked with Scamma too. He was making an extension and asked for help. I couldn't help him, so I sent him to ask Richard. And then? Then I went to bed. Okay. Who do you think did it? I'm like everyone else. I don't think Scamma did it. He's a nice dude. I'm saying invalid project. Seems to be pointing fingers a bit too much. All right. Thanks, Booster Games. You can go. Hmm, it's an interesting theory, since Invalid Project has been accusing a lot, too. Hmm, we should continue to pixel doodle. Um, hi. The others told me about what this is. And I can say I was coding almost all night. It was supposed to be a secret, but you can see it. I also talked to Invalid Project about Pixel Smash. Do you need the time? No, Invalid Project gave it to us. Okay, 
I also believe Scamma is the culprit, though. If that's everything, then you can go. Suspiciously short. Agree. Mm, we should hurry up. Danger Noodle is next. Question me. Hello. Tell us what you were doing last night. Hmm? We need to know who hacked Taser. All right. Last night, I was watching Richard's tutorial. Started at 6, then I left at 8.30 to talk to Sarge. After that, I just coded till 10.30 and went to bed. That's all? Who do you think is the culprit? I have no clue who hacked Taser. They better have a really good reason. Brilliant. Now it's Richard. Yes. Wow, uh, you're in a rush. It's called being on schedule. Man, Mako is snippy. Dang. Yeah, I've been gosh. following along. Last night at 6 p.m., I streamed a tutorial for beginners. Never happened. Then I read some Harry Potter for a bit. Oh, me? What? Later at 9.30, I talked with Abstract Designer, Schema, and Glitchtrap at intervals during the night. Glitchtrap and Abstract Designer have a lot in common. I left at about 11.15 uh, p.m. Glitchtrap was saying how late it was, so I uh, headed out. And who do I think did it? I don't point fingers. Besides, uh, you guys know it wasn't me. I mean, come on. Yeah, should we take him off the suspect list? No, no, we shouldn't. Next is Glitchtrap. He should hear him. We should hear him out first. Glitch trap? Oh. Uh, seems pretty sus. Hello. Mm. Sorry, I was uh, talking with someone. Maybe a hacker sure. coach? Hmm, it's all right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> all right, I talked to Sarge at 9.40. At 10.30, I talked with Richard in the chatting area. Abstract designer had just left. I talked with Richard until 11.15 uh, p.m. He's acting quite suspicious. Uh, so you believe it's Richard? Yes. I'd be surprised, though. Perfect. I already have theories. Really? Oh, yes. Time to gather everyone. Dramatic fade. All right. Oh, gosh. It's really heating up. Do we have any... Uh, you guys, what, what do your notes consist of? I understand it was going very quickly. <laughs> uh, I guess Richard, I mean, it's not just that guy. Yeah. Uh, Most people seemed... were asleep. At least they claimed to be yeah. asleep yeah. by like 10.30. The only thing I caught on as a potential inconsistency was that both Glitchtrap and Scamma were talking to Richard in the chatting area at yeah, the same I time. Yeah, I caught does but, Richard have access to all form accounts? Yeah, Richard and I do. Yep. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we we can do like an impersonate mode or something. That's just a discourse feature for any admin. It's true. Yes. I never use it though, except occasionally to like change someone's profile picture or something. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, mm -hmm. let's go. Let's see if this is the dramatic conclusion. Okay, everyone. We're on this topic now. This is so scary. I know, lol. But I think I know who the culprit is. Really? I'm uh, just having ideas. I don't want to risk guessing wrong, but I still have theories. Joseph, who do you think the culprit is? I think it's Boosted Games. Someone told me he was on bad terms with Taser. Who told you? <laughs> That's my secret. Good day, everyone. Here, we will discuss who we believe is the culprit. Our team has four suspects. Abstract Designer, Glitchtrap, Richard, and Scamma. You're kidding. <laughs> this is some sick joke, right? Scamma, your alibi is quite solid. I will explain as to why we chose you in a moment. I don't see why I'm here. I'm just along for fun, right? All right, let's start. 
everyone's alibis are very strong. But we have a few theories as to who hacked Taser. Scamma and Abstract Designer are here because they both have hacking knowledge. Abstract Designer asked Scamma how he could hack the forums. Scamma said it was a friendly question. But I still find it important. Richard and Glitchtrap were the people way closest to the time of the hacking. I have three theories, the last probably being right. My first theory is that Scamma did it, but... After our first encounter, I learned that Scamma lowers the forum's frame rate. It drops dangerously low, however, when he's hacking. So I made a function that tells me when the forum's frame rate drops absurdly low. The function did not go off, so he did not hack Taser. Ha! I told you! Yes, yes. My theory, second theory, is that it was Richard. Ridiculous as it sounds. He has more power over the forums than the other suspects. He also stayed up unnecessarily late. Very suspicious. There's a few weaknesses in this theory, though. As I know, certainly, Richard can't hack. What? Another weakness is that, well, it's Richard. We all know he wouldn't do this. True. Mm. If it wasn't obvious, you... I didn't hack into Taser's account. And now for my final theory. Theory I feel is completely correct. I, certain, I believe almost certainly that the culprit for the hacking of Taser is none other than... Oh, God. Mm. Oh, God. Maybe it's Taser themselves. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so we got we to gotta choose something now, right? Yeah. Oh, no! Uh -oh. Uh... All right, um, please there. shout out in chat if you're there. If you have any theories, we're going <laughs> to go ahead and discuss a little bit. So who are the people but we had the played... inconsistency Wait. with? But if you've yeah. played before, don't don't tell us who it is. True. So yes, yes. If you yeah. played before, no spoilers. All right. We're going to keep it there. Okay. Um, so, so we had the consistency with Glitch Trap and um, uh, ab Abstract Designer, was it? I don't know if it was Abstract Designer or Scamma who was talking with Richard at the same time in the chatting area. Mm. But we know it's Black. not Scamma. No, yeah, it's not Scamma. Scamma Scamma was chatting with Richard at 10.30, I think. Right, which is when Glitch Trap was talking to Richard. Oh. So that would be an inconsistency in Glitch Trap's uh, story. That's true. And but we also have Pixel Doodle had an extremely lack of an alibi. We don't really have true. any reason to point fingers at Pixel Doodle, but we also don't have anything to exonerate them. Right. They said they were talking about Pixel Smash with Invalid Project, which was confirmed by Invalid Project, but that was early. And then they just said they were coding all night. So, mm. I mean, hey. All right. We, we have in the chat, um, Invalid Project says, uh, why would Taser hack himself? Uh, so not Taser. Um, <laughs> hey, maybe they just maybe. didn't want to have to pick a winner and needed an excuse to avoid, you know, True. Robbie Z um, says Sarge. Uh, Invalid Project says um, Pixel, maybe. Um, uh, Robbie Zero says Sarge. Um, Pixel Doodle says, just don't you dare pick me. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm, that's pretty sus. <laughs> it's, it is pretty sus. Um, okay, Alex it says it's Joey, not an option. <laughs> Um, okay, we got to go with something. It seems like nobody has any idea. Um, I, I kind of wish we could go back through the logs, you know, mm -hmm. so that we could try to pull out the inconsistencies a little bit more because it was going so fast I couldn't take notes. Well, also, I was voice acting, but yeah, yeah I tried to um, try to test it, but it was hard. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, uh, Gideon is saying taser. Um, all right, well, let's not. I'm going to go ahead and let's pull Taser Scamma off the table, just because I think Taser is a little too obvious, and Scamma we know probably didn't do it based on what the game told us. Mm. Um, so I'm going to just ask uh, each of you three to vote, and then I will vote, and then we'll just choose one based off that, okay? You don't have to have a reason. It could just be feeling. So... Um, we yeah, have yeah. Sarge, Invalid Project, Abstract Designer, Pixel Noodle, Danger Noodle, and then uh, I believe Glitch Trap is this one down here who I can't see. Um, mm. Actually, there's two down here I can't see, and it's not scrolling. So 
that's maybe a, a problem. So we'll just go with Pixel Doodle, Danger Doodle, Abstract Designer, Involved Project, and uh, Large. Um, I'm going to go with Pixel Doodle. You know, they had a weak alibi. And even though that maybe points a few more theater fingers at them than needs to be done. Um, yeah, mm. just going to go with that. Sorry, Pixel Doodle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Pixel Doodle. Uh, just a vibe. I'll I'll go with Inbound Project because they were blaming Scamma so hard. That's a good point. Do we, yeah, I'm I'm thinking the same thing, but I just wanted to ask: Do we? I I don't have this written down. Um, who asked Scamma about hacking again? That was Abstract Designer. Hmm. Pixel Doodle says, stop picking me. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I'm going to change my vote, Pixel Doodle, not because you convinced me, but because I think that it is interesting to, uh, there's perhaps more reason to, to consider uh, Invalid Project or Abstract Designer. Um, I'm going to, yeah. you know, I'm going to go with Invalid Project. I'm going to throw Abstract Designer in there, but Invalid project is really close too. Oh man, invalid project is also. <laughs> <laughs> it helps that these people are in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I I would pick myself, but I'm not actually in this list, so um, yeah, you're I'm, the I'm probably one of the hidden too. ones. Um, oh, you might. Looks like the one right below Danger Noodle maybe has an I as the second letter, so that might be. Richard. True. That could oh, be no, there's too many. I don't think you have. I don't, I, no, I have. There's walls. an H and yeah. a D. So H that, that and probably D. is Richard. Uh, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, all right. OK, we're between invalid project and abstract designer. Um, let's just let's just flip a coin. Does anyone have a coin? <laughs> nope. Hey, you could do a coin flip on. <laughs> In, in yeah, Chrome, please though. make a video game about flipping a coin, Richard, right away. <laughs> um, all right, well, you got to have something you can forum flip. bot not have a dice roll functionality? Um, I'll flip a micro bit. All right, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> okay, logo, logo up is invalid project. <laughs> logo down is abstract designer. But they logo both have logos. Okay. Now, you know which one I'm talking about, the clickable one. <laughs> Okay. Um, logo up. Logo up. That's invalid project, yeah. I think. That's invalid project. Sorry, invalid. <laughs> I guess that, that is a good point that I did implement this in the bot uh, four years, three years ago, but um, <laughs> I forgot about that until just now. So. Mm. All right. Invalid project. Nope. Nope. The culprit is none other than. Does that mean we got it Wait, wrong? Do we select another <laughs> oh, one? Oh, you, oh we you... get to select another one. OK, OK, we got we to gotta choose another one. Hi, Hassan, we're still on stream. Yeah, I know. I've been watching. <laughs> All right, we'll do abstract designer this time, because that was our, our second choice. Abstract designer. Oh, we, well, hey, we were close. Right, Props yeah. to us. Yes, you. <laughs> Let's look at the info <laughs> we have on abstract designer. He asked Scamma how he hacked the make code forums but Scamma did not suspect him. I believe he learned from that over the next few days. He states that he read a book during the night just after discussing with Scamma on his extension. I believe he was slowly learning from Scamma. I also believe that he read for a little bit less than an hour. Then he used the rest of the time up to 9.45 to do something else. Okay. So suddenly I asked Scamma half a question, and now I can hack into anything? I wish the, wor the world worked like that. <laughs> but there's a gaping hole in your theory. How could I possibly have hacked Taser? I was offline by 1015. A valid point. Which is why I want to now look at Glitch Trap. OK, maybe we weren't right. <laughs> 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 the time of the hack. 
I wish that was my choice if they were on the screen. Talk about Sarge. Okay. All right. Take credit for that. Sarge explained that Glitch Trap was very... They hardly got time to talk. Even during the interrogations today, Glitch Trap didn't arrive for a while. Oh, right. He was in a rush. Glitch Trap stated that he was talking to a friend. Did anyone talk to Glitch Trap before his interrogation? You're right. I didn't see him. I thought he'd used uh, the no message approval time. Yes, indeed. But he knew just when to go online for his interrogation. I don't see how this relates to me. If you have all this evidence against him, then why are you accusing me? <laughs> Is it not obvious yet? There are many connections between They're you two. The same person. Richard yes. said how you and Glitchtrap are similar. Isn't it strange that you both accused Richard when no one else did? You know where this is going. No way. They're in cahoots? <laughs> Worse. In alt. Glitchtrap <laughs> <laughs> is abstract designer's alt. It lines up perfectly. None of their times overlap. This is why Glitch Trap is always in a rush. Running to swap to Abstract Designer or vice versa. Abstract Designer gets the hacking information and Glitch Trap executes it. He never even states when he goes to bed in his alibi. <gasps> Joseph. Who told you that Boosted Games was on bad terms with Taser? Abstracted. What? I'm pals with it, Boosted Games. And to finally prove my point, where is Glitch Trap? Offline. Anything to say, abstract designer? Hmm. Look, okay, fine. I hacked Taser's account. Wow. But why? Look, to tell you the honest truth, I wanted to know who won Coder King 3. <laughs> You were taking forever. Are you kidding me? My entire reputation nearly got burned to the ground because of you. <laughs> um, sorry. I will not accept this. Scamma, uh -oh. I think you will. There's a difference between someone who hacked a company and someone who hacked an account, which means he deserves to be forgiven. Just as much, if not more, than you do. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, I guess. I guess I can release the winner for Coder King 3. And the Coder King 3 winner is... Message. <laughs> Winner three, Luke. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, there are like multiple winners. Oh, that's what. So wait, were we right? Or? Um, um, kind of. But they're kind of, sort of. It was our second right choice. see the alt thing coming. First, we have know. to apologize to Invalid Project, even though we were mm. voting for the, uh, the virtual Invalid Project, not the actual one who was in chat. <laughs> Still apologize. Of course. Um, and uh, yeah, it was our second choice, so that's good. But anyway, we're way over time. Um, thank you for the game, uh, Tim Broda Pro. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun reading it all out, and uh, it was a good mystery. Had a lot of twists and turns. Um, so I, I can't wait for more forum games to come out if you're going to keep, you know, releasing them. They're always a fun time. Um, my only comment would be, please make them go a little bit slower or make it controllable or maybe that I could go backwards uh, because I definitely missed a lot of the stuff they were saying. <laughs> um, so, all right, uh, that's it for the Game Jam stream. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I'm Richard. I'm Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Hassan at Hassan on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at JWalk on the Make Code Forum. I guess we do have to do one more thing. What do we have to do? There you go. Oh, you gave Hassan a quarter. There we go. Oh, what okay. is the post <laughs> well, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm Thomas. That's Fox on the Forum. 
And I'm Sarah, as we could go to be good for him. And uh, we'll see you all on Monday. Bye.